This is the Bears Barroom Radio Network. Uh, hello. The following program is recorded live and intended for all audiences. Radio is scripted now. We just come up with it. We don't use computers. We don't rehearse. We're going to talk about this next. We're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the Bulls. And then we're going to have Brad Fix on. And then we're going to have all this. No. No. If you don't know what you're going to talk about in the top of your head before a show, you shouldn't be in the business. I don't know what you got. I feel like Vince Vaughn in, in a couple's retreat. The sharks are circling. Old school, baby. You're listening to the Mike North Advantage, and it begins right now. That's right, the Mike North Advantage starts right now. I am Aldo Gandia, Mike's wingman, and let's get to this right away. Mike North, how are you, my friend? I'm good, Aldo. We're breaking in and out, so hopefully we'll get a better, we'll get a, a little better reception. Hope everybody's hearing me out there. We're pleased to have on a guy that has spanned my lifetime. I mean, quite frankly, uh, the guy has been around since I started following football, 1963 with the championship, 19, uh, later 1960s with the Super Bowl, when also with uh, the, the coaching of the Chicago Bears, built the dynasty, we'll talk about also was very integral part of my career with the score and everything else. We're pleased to have on Mike Ditka. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing good, Michael. How are you? Good to talk to you. How, first of all, how are you handling this whole COVID-19 thing? Did you ever think we'd be in a position like this in your lifetime? Not at all, but I'm down in Florida right now, and I really haven't done anything. I go out and take off once in a while. Of course, it's, most of the time it's closed, but when it's open, we take off once in a while. That's all we do. Nothing to do. You know, I got to talk to you. I want to go backwards instead of forwards with your career, because like I said, you, you've done it all. I mean, you've been a player, a coach, a head coach. Uh, you, you played before there was a Super Bowl and won a championship. You played after the Super Bowl started and you won a championship. I want to start with your broadcast. I just saw a special on you on the NFL Network. How painstakingly hard was it for you, who's an in-the-moment guy, to rehearse, to go over scripts, to, to basically talk about something an hour later that you had already rehearsed. Because you and I, for instance, and everybody else back in the day, it was spontaneous in life. How tough was that for you? It was. And, uh, you know, you're right. And uh, we, I've always been a spontaneous guy. Sometimes it's been good, sometimes it's been bad. Let's face it. I've done some stupid things, said some stupid things, but, you know, that's the way I am. I'm, 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 I, you know, I hear it, I answer, I respond. And whether people like it, I, I can't worry about that right now, you know. It's not going to matter whether I go to heaven or hell, they like me. <laughs> You're 80 years old now, and now are you shooting for 100? Oh, I don't worry about that, Mike. I take one day at a time, you know. You know I tell you what, I've a healthy life. It's a gift from God. So, you know, what you do with that, that's up to you. I've been fortunate, you know. I've done some good things. I've done some stupid things. Uh, we don't always do the right things. Uh, for that, I apologize. But I, I lived my life to what I thought I should at the time. Like I said, whether it was right or wrong, I can't change that, you know. you got to live with the results. Technical difficulties. Yeah, I'm here. Perfect. All right, that's better. We got you back. This was all live. They even heard me say the F word when I lost <laughs> you, for God's sake. So we got through the broadcasting part of it. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about New Orleans, okay? We're going backwards with you. Do you almost wish you never took that job? Now that you look, you were 15 and 33. You pulled a ballsy trade for Ricky Williams. Uh, you, you never were afraid to try something new. People predicted you weren't going to make it from day one in any venue, uh, let alone when you, when you went to New Orleans. Heck, they thought you weren't going to make it with the Bears. Do you almost have a sign of regret that you made that move? I really don't. I met a lot of wonderful people there. Uh, it was an opportunity. I thought I could make a difference, and I didn't. You know, you know, it just uh, that was my my thing. I, you know, he takes players, he takes good players, and uh, I'll never uh, change the, the players I had when I coached the Bears were fantastic. Not only as their talent, but I mean the attitude they had to play the game. And football team, you got to have people who are willing to uh, pay the price, lay it on the line, do what have to do to to uh, make the team better. And I had those guys, so you know, you, you, it's hard to find that, you know. I've been very fortunate. Did Eagle come into play, Mike, taking that job to show the Bears 
and to show uh, other people? I, I, I've got a positive uh, a train of thought. I don't have a negative one. So when I do something, I, I'm always going to say, well, it's going to work out for the best. Sometimes it doesn't, but, you know, it, it, it's never going to work out for anything if you don't try it. Do you think there was fake news? Well, there was fake news back then, whether it be about you, whether it be about uh, the president of the United States right now, uh, whether it even was about me. Uh, they always wrote some dishonest things, and not just about us three, but about a lot of other people back in the day. How much of the stuff that came out in the papers was true? And do you almost resent the fact that just like the president or even like myself or other people, you were predicted not to make it from day one? Yeah, but I mean, it hurts. It hurt. Yeah, to say it doesn't hurt, you know, everybody's got a nigo. But do I buy into it? No, I don't buy into it. I didn't buy into it. I had an opportunity. And all I looked at was the opportunity. The opportunity was a down there, try to coach a football team that wasn't very successful and make them successful. Since then, they got rid of it. They become Did you think George Ellis was going to answer that letter? Did you think he was going to pick up the phone or whatever he did? Once you wrote the letter to say, I want to coach the Bears, or did you, were you hoping, what was, what was the percentage that you felt that he'd, he'd answer that matter, letter, Mike? It doesn't matter what I thought. The matter of the fact was I wanted him to know. And when you say you were in the know, you said, I think I can turn this Bear franchise around, what is Coach it? Atlas, and he, and he bought into it. Well, you know, we had good players. I mean, I, 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 I never really know this. It didn't happen. It wasn't magic. I mean, it, it, we, can, we had great players. You look at the football team we put on the field, we were at a good football team. So, you know, hey, what, what can I tell you? you know, I was there in 63 when we were good players then, too. When you said you were going to clean out the locker, and a lot of people said, and you told people that you weren't going to be here for the Super Bowl if we ended up going to the Super Bowl, um, was that the turning point for you to start to get the Bears to the height that they got to? Well, I just know there were a lot of people there that uh, didn't belong there, uh, and it was mostly hype and reputation, but uh, uh, yeah, bear. I thought that meant something to be a Chicago bear, and I always think that rather than they had to do things a certain way, it had to be my way, and uh, I went with that. I, I, I could have been wrong, but I wasn't wrong. And, and, and you, you look at the, the team we had, the people we had, the characters we had, we had good, good people. They played their butt off. They really did. So they were good people. When you went to uh, work for WSCR, the score, in 92, and you showed up to your restaurant at Ditka's on Cumberland, which I'll never forget was a great, great place, along with your other places, how hard was it for you to – you honored your contract, but let's face it, I don't think there's been many coaches in their final year, maybe what you knew was your final year – that actually were walking the plank, Mike, with with ownership, and yet you went on the air every week, never missing a, never missing a week of the Mike Ditka show. How hard was that for you, though? Well, it's not easy, Mike, but I had an obligation. I signed the contract to do it. I didn't think I'd be in that situation. I got in that situation, and I, I tried to deal with it. That's so, listen, you know, it, 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 I, I don't have an answer for it, but I feel that I had an honor the obligation that I made with those people, and I did it. And maybe a little bit was ego, but uh, I did it anyways. Danny Lee and everybody at WSCR at the time, when they came to you with the opportunity, because I think the score, a big part of the score, is Mike Ditka. It's also Michael Jordan, 92. It's the Bears. Um, it's the personalities also, but and the management. But uh, when Danny Lee came to you, uh, when the ownership came to you of the score, did you almost say no? Well, Mike, I don't remember that. I don't think so. I, I, I don't <laughs> that was a long time ago, right? It was a long time ago. I don't remember what I did yet. Yeah, but let me ask you about that. How, how's your health? How are you feeling? I feel okay. I'm okay. I mean, uh, it is what it is. I, I mean, I, I don't try to do more than I, I, I uh, can. I try to do what I can. Right now, I'm in Florida for about another week. I'm coming back to Chicago. I'll be back for the whole summer. I'm looking forward to it. I love Chicago. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's been good. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't play as much golf as I used to. I love golf, but I, I don't play very well. But I, I don't play as much as I used to. That's all there is to it. I remember hanging with you in the 90s. We'd be out or we'd be downtown or you'd, we'd run into each other. And I always said to myself, you know, 
I got to enjoy this time while I can, because someday this is all going to be over. I think, you know what, it's one of those, you know, live it up while you can type of things, or, or be as, go as aggressive as you can. You had that same philosophy, and you knew someday that wasn't going to last forever. It's just, now you're in better, now you're in good health, and you just slow down a little bit. That's, the, that's, that's, that's life, right? It is, yeah. And, and, you know, but I don't, I, we, we never think about those things, Mike. When you're young, mm-hmm. you think you're incredible, you know, you think you're going to laugh. It's right. never, never going to stop. The parade's going to continue. You think all those things, but it doesn't. It comes to an end, and it's okay. But, you know, it was for a while, and I was in the parade for a while. Diana, I love her. Bibi, you know I love my wife, and you know Bibi. How important are the women in our, in our lives? How important has Diana been? Uh, even from the very beginning with you, uh, with, with the bear stuff and with all the upheaval and ups and downs and all around, to have somebody there that you could rely on behind closed doors. Well, Mike, you know that. You know, you're, you're, you're better choose wisely because they're going to be with you in good times and in bad times. And they're there to pick you up when you're down and, and uh, you know, not let you get too high on the horse things like that, but um, that has been fantastic. She's the love of my life, and uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful lady. And she's done well to put up with my, my crap all these years, <laughs> believe, me. believe me. Well, I'm with you on that, the same with Bibi, that put up with my crap all these years, too. And I think there's a lot of guys out there that would probably say the same thing. Uh, before we let you go, Mike, if you were the Bears where, it, right now, and I know you follow the Bears, are you happy about the Trubisky Falls situation and – you know what? They've been wrong about quarterbacks before, talking about the press, but people are already awarding Foles the job. Would you consider that uh, a competitive situation when they're already basically with the press, you know this, handing the job to Foles? Well, I, I, I don't agree with anything like that. I mean, I like Mitch Trubisky. I think he's one hell of a football player. Hey, he could play for me. That's all I know. I, I don't know enough about Foles or anybody else, but I do know him. I like the coach. I think they've got a fine coach to get there doing the right things in the organization. But, hey, you know, you got to, you know, you kind of got to get a little lucky, too, when you're doing all the right things. Make, do it right, make the right moves, but get a little lucky, too. Mike, I want to tell you from me and BB and everybody in Chicago, love you very much. You did a lot for a lot of people. You still do. And I want to tell you, I can't be happier for what's happened uh, right now, real quick, I'm going to go to uh, Aldo Gandia. He's got a questions, couple questions, and Aldo's got some chat board questions. Real quick, Aldo. Yeah, real quick, Mike. Uh, first of all, Fat Mike wants to. He's in our chat room. Fat Mike wants to know what's your favorite kind of cigar because he's a big cigar smoker and wants to pick one up that you've smoked. Well, I have a line of a lot of cigars that uh, they're made by me by Camacho. They're pretty good. I mean, but I but I smoke anything. I. I uh, Probably don't smoke as much as I used to, but I do smoke cigars and I like them. And uh, if it's going to kill me, then I'm going to die from it because I do smoke cigars. But not a, I don't smoke like I used to. I might smoke uh, maybe one a day, maybe. Well, enjoy the next one. Heart forty eight zero three wants to know what is your when you say when we somebody says the name George Hallis, what is the first memory that comes to mind when you hear the two words uh, George Hallis? You know, I was, I was a defensive player in college. And he made me a tight end. What the hell? I didn't know what it was. <laughs> then he had a guy named Lee Trotter who, who really tailored the position, tailored me for the position, and, and we became very successful being with the tight end. The tight end became very uh, uh, relevant in, in pro football. So then I uh, out there because I was a smart ass. I uh, got to Philadelphia. Uh, they they uh, they didn't put up with me too long. I went to Dallas, changed my life. Met a man named Landry, became a uh, a team player. Uh, we're on and coach there because I coached for Landry. I got the job. Coach out brought me back. So it's been a hell of a run. I mean, I he couldn't write a book. And it couldn't be any better. I had a hell of a run. Whether it was good or not, it's uh, you know it it, it was. Yeah. Got back to Chicago. I did what I promised him. Uh, I didn't say that bad. I thought I was going to bring a championship. So, and we brought a championship. I didn't bring it. But the Bears brought it. Well, my, uh, my final question is really this. It's, it's more of a comment, Mike. I just want to thank you. What you have done for the city of Chicago is just 
unbelievable. And all of the Chicago Bears fans, all the Chicago sports fans, thank you for your playing days, for sacrificing so much of yourself, for your coaching, for leading us to a championship, and just for being an icon and a representative of Chicago in a way unlike anybody has ever done. Thank you very much, Coach Mike Ditka. All right. God bless you, Mike. Hey, by the way, Mike, before we let you go, you saw the Michael Jordan thing, right? I didn't see the thing, no. I didn't really see it. Well, let me ask you something. Did they break up the Bears? It, they're talking about breaking up the Bulls after 97, not giving them up an opportunity. But there were people like Wilbur Marshall and Willie Gaunt let go <laughs> early. Well, I, Did they put... I, 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 yeah, I, I, I didn't agree with all those moves. No, I didn't. I really didn't. Wilbur Marshall was a hell of a football player. He might have been a pain in the ass, but he was a hell of a football player. So I don't think you get rid of good football players uh, for no reason at all. And that's what we did. All right, Mike. We appreciate it very much. You take good care of yourself. We'll check in with you real soon, okay? All right, bye-bye. Mike Ditka, I'll go here on the Bears Bar Room. Sorry about some of the sound and everything else, but we weren't going to stop the interview a second time. It was just the way that the phone hookup was, and I think everybody got the gist of what Coach Ditka was. But once again, you know what? It was across the, the, the country, and, you know, you got Florida out there, and you got a million people making phone calls during this time. I thought it went great. I just kept my head down like you did and hoped that the phone thing would work out. <laughs> exactly. I'll tell you this. The dozens and dozens of people who joined us live for this version of the Mike North had vanished to hear Coach live. Lots of great comments, despite the technical imperfections. We are uh, lots of heart emojis. Did everybody hear me say the F word? Isn't that nice? Yeah, exactly. I might leave that in for the podcast version. Just yeah, leave it in for the podcast because you know what? We have the big, we have the czar of the Chicago Bears franchise, in my opinion, after George Hallis. Would you, would you agree? I mean, I think there's more people that look at Ditka for what he did than yeah. some of the stuff that Hallis did, but that was phenomenal. Yes. Uh, but uh, he you said it to him right now, although you said, look, what you mean to people, what you mean to Chicago is, 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 is tantamount. And I think he knows that. And, and that's why when I called him yesterday, Diana had the phone and, and, you know, we just had that, you know, we had to recall Mike and he was, he was as great as ever with us and with me. He just said, no problem. And then we recalled him back. And once again, you know what, we had some technical difficulties, but very few compared to the content that we had, including the fact exactly. he loves Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, how He about loves that? Mitch Trubisky. And that was the one thing I think out of this whole interview that was, I think, a good interview that told us some insights. In fact, and told me one insight that he's a much more understanding man at his age of 80 than he was ever at the age of 50. Believe me when I tell you this, because age does make you understand. But I think the one thing I gleaned from this interview more than anything was Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, I totally, totally ag agree with you. Hashtag, he, he's a Mitch man, just like you said last week that you were a Mitch man, and we we, we sent that out on uh, social media. And that, that to me, is, says a lot, because Mike Ditka knows a lot about quarterbacks. Yep. He knows a lot about being a Chicago Bear. He knows what it takes to be a quarterback, and so he sees Mitch Trubisky. He sees the imperfections, but he's got faith in this guy, and I think that's why, you know, while I'm not the biggest fan of Mitch Trubisky, but I know that he's capable of doing some good things if he's got the tools around him, if he's got the offense offensive line there to give him time if he's got a tight end that can get open and we're going to be talking about Rob Gronkowski in a little while Mike oh yeah <laughs> but uh, if he has all those tools then we're going to see a quarterback who played much better than he did in uh, 2019 and 2020 and he could regain the starting job I, I, I have a lot of confidence it was great to hear Mike say that about Trubisky it is. I think if you're Mitch Trubisky, and you know people will be talking about this interview today, whether it's on chat boards, whether it's on the radio, mm -hmm. uh, or anything else. I think the thing that you know everything that we talked about, whether he had regrets with New Orleans, whether you know what uh, they broke up a super team. We talk about the Bulls. We'll talk about how many other great teams have been broken up. I didn't know the '97 Bulls were the only great team ever broken up. I got a list of five or six uh, teams that have been broken up, not only in Chicago but in in the nation over over years so uh you know while it's michael jordan i think that's the gist of that uh that documentary it's all about jordan in my opinion because you know 
him playing at North Carolina had nothing to do with the last dance. But what it did was it sets up a beautiful documentary to see how they got to the last dance. And uh, believe me, later on we'll talk about some other franchises that were just broken up prematurely, including the Chicago Bears. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want to give up Galt. He didn't want to give up Marshall. And there were other guys I know he didn't want to give up that he ended up giving up. Yeah. Hey, Mike, I'm going to throw you a quick curveball here because – we're always yeah. getting new listeners here at Bears Ballroom Radio Network, and uh, and most of them are a lot younger than you and me. <laughs> and so, right. oh, yeah. Lady Bear... And uh, Ditka, and Ditka. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lady Bear in the chat room was informed by Tooch that you created the score sports radio and she said really i love the score why don't you tell people quickly again how that all began with you and mr lee well anything else that you hear is fake news whether it's from anywhere else because i got some good news the uh, jeremy morrison called me yesterday and the script for raging mouth is done wow and uh, we've been through the last year uh yeah ahead of schedule pushed harder on them to get done while we're in the coronavirus situation because everybody's closed down and i figured i have somebody that i can get it to and get ahead of the game and they did it you know we're going to get it sent to us today so we're excited about that but the score the story is that my uh, danny lee came in one day uh, the xrt people used to come in all the time whether it be uh, lynn bramer uh, uh norm winder was then the program director uh, the score guys came in even before I got the job at the score. McNeil would come in. Doug Buffon, God bless him, who's been gone five years the other day, would come in. Uh, but mostly the XRT people from general manager Harvey Wells to Seth Mason to the owner Danny Lee. Danny Lee comes in one day and he says, I, I read in Rob Feeder's column that, uh, that uh, they were going to start a jazz station or they were going to start a, a, a country, cool country. I didn't even know what cool country was but i knew country was you know okay but i said my god we need a sports station in this town because they're starting to crop up this was around 1991 they had just bought the letters wjzz they were going to probably go with jazz uh danny lee comes in and this is going to be in the movie and i see seth mason walk in ahead of him there's a crowd of people, including kids from Schnurz High School, policemen, factory workers. They're all waiting in line. I see Danny Lee. I had just read in Rob Feeder's column that they were going to go with those two. I walk up to Danny Lee. He's a little bit wet because it had been raining. I walk up to Danny Lee. I go, Danny. He goes, hey, how you doing? I go, good. Listen, I, I read that you're going to start uh, maybe a jazz station or a country station. He says, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of doing that. We're going to probably have a meeting on Monday. They go, listen to me. I said, th can think of sports. He goes, sports. Now, he didn't pan it, but I go, there's 12, 14, 15 sports stations right now. You know, the fan in New York, Denver, San Diego. I kept track. I said, Chicago doesn't have a sports station. We, please reconsider. He goes, ah, we're going to go music. We're music guys probably, but, you know, I appreciate the thought. Well, people, my BB yells at me, which, you, you know, BB comes up to me, and I said, I'm trying to talk to Danny and just start the sports station. She goes, we got five people waiting in line here. Get, wait on them afterwards. I go, I, okay. She drags me over. I wait on the people. BB or one of the other people waits on Danny Lee, gets his lunch. They go to eat. They're ready to leave. It's a pouring rain. They say, see you later. They walk out the door. I come across around the counter. I chase them out. It's pouring. I mean, Pouring like in the movies, pouring, where they have to put the water three times as hard so you can see the rain through the film. <laughs> and uh, it was like a monsoon. And I'm standing outside. Seth Mason gets in the door. Danny gets in the driver's side. They roll down the window real quick. I go, please reconsider. Talk to me. I go, do sports. You won't regret it. You And they drive away. And they say, see you, Mike. And then over the weekend, Danny Lee buys the Chicago Tribune and Chicago Sun-Times. And he asks them, or he goes through the Sun Times and the Tribune, the Sundays, and all he sees is advertisements in the sports section, and in the entertainment section for jazz and country, hardly sees any of it. Then he asks his wife about the conversation, or tells his wife about the conversation, Karen Lee, and Karen says, well, you know, it's funny, I was in the dentist's office, and there was like five people there, 
and and two one two no three were guys and there was another woman. Me and another woman weren't talking, but the three guys were talking about the Bears. And after he bought and saw the advertisement in the Tribune and Sun Times, he walked in on Monday morning. He sat down with everybody at a round big table in the conference room, which was set up front uh, on the Belmont side. And they looked at him. They go, what kind of music station are we going to do? And he said, we're going to do a sports station. And I remember they went nuts. Are you crazy? You're going to listen to that goof at the hot dog stand? You're going to listen to Mike? He doesn't know anything what he's talking about. He's this, he's that. And the next thing you know, that's what happened. That and, is and amazing. It, it, well, we'll take that. It's going to chronic, chronicalize that story. Previous parts of my life, early format, narrative format, all the way through. And, and uh, it's going to be, I think, one of the best movies. Uh, once it gets going, and we got the script now, so now we can really start getting moving on some certain things, get things set up. It's going to be a great movie. Absolutely. Now, Ditka joins the score. That was a huge, huge coup oh. for you guys. Now, you guys already were capturing the imagination of the entire city. Finally, a sports radio station that told it like it is with Mike North having that fan's voice and telling it like it is. And then Mike Ditka arrives at the score. Tell us what that was like. Well, what was great is that Danny Lee didn't care what we said on the air. He really did. And Danny Lee, basically, who's the greatest one of the, should be in the, uh, the Hall of Fame, the Radio Hall of Fame. Yeah. I mean, that, that to me is insane. WXRT in Chicago, maybe he is, and somebody forgot to tell me, which wouldn't surprise me one bit. But uh, Danny never, with any of the shows, told us what we could say, what we couldn't. Now, Ron Gleason, the program director, would. But we'd tell Ron, you know what, no, this is the way I think this has got to be. I mean, to give you a perfect example, he said, you know, I was talking about getting drunk on Rush Street one night, and, you know, we went home, and, uh, you know, I couldn't get in the garage. <laughs> because, my, you know, do you ever, I, I, I tried three times with the four digits. I couldn't get in, you know? <laughs> and I said, thank God I wasn't driving. What well, Ron Gleason calls me, and you can't be saying you were drunk. You can't be saying you were on Rush Street. You can't be saying you were in the neighborhood. I go... Well, you might as well forget about it then. So I know that Ron would then go to Danny Lee and Seth Mason, and Danny Lee always signed on with me. Uh-huh. Always. That's amazing. Always backed me, no yeah. matter what I went through. And then Ditka right. was just a genius hire. You have the Bulls getting going in 92, and then you have Ditka getting hired in 92. A guy who's, who's getting thrown out of his job and taking hits from everybody from the press and from the radio. And I will say this, I didn't say this to him and from the listeners, I was in his corner from day one, and I never left it. I remember when Wanstead got hired and he took the job with New Orleans, or with somebody else, when Mike took the job with New Orleans, I'm trying to remember who was the coach. I know Wanstead got hired, I said that was the biggest mistake the Bears made. But then when he went to New Orleans, yeah. we did not go. My show went to lacrosse to cover the Saints, and that pissed the Bears off bad. Ooh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> now, and the guys at the station were going, what are you nuts? I go, don't you get it? Dick is as big as the Bears. That's right. That's don't right. you get that? Yep. It's been too soon. People still want them back. They still want to cover them in Chicago. And they said, you know what? You're right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Amazing. Everybody else went to, to Bears camp. Now, there was uh, at a time uh, a very famous clip of Ditka on the Score Sports Radio. Somebody called in, uh, a guy named Neil from North Lake, and somebody called right. in and was critical of him. I got a clip here. Let's see if we can hear it and, and see what, what was uh, said. Instead of getting mad at the way his team played, why did, uh, during the press conference, why did it appear that Mike was uh, holding back, trying not to cry like the baby that he is? Well, Neil, I tell you what, what you are, I can't say on the air. But I tell you what, I'm 53 years old, and I, 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 my office is at 250 North Washington. Anytime you want to meet me there, you call me back on the air, you tell me what time and when, and I'll whip your ass. <laughs> it's still one of the greatest cuts in radio history. There's nothing better. Neil from North Lake. I mean, you, you remember that name. You remember where you were. I mean, I'm not putting it up with the Kennedy assassination or Elvis where, he, where were you when he died. But I mean, I remember hearing that. I'm, I, I, I'm going, wow. It was awesome. And, you know, we had rotating uh, for, the, for the Ditka show. 
we had rotating uh, hosts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you'd get, sometimes you'd get Ditka in a good mood, sometimes you'd get Ditka in a bad mood. Yes, exactly. uh, or sometimes in an in-between mood. But 92 was rough, not only on Ditka, but for everybody. Yeah. I mean, everybody, because you know what? If he came in a bad mood and the press was on his ass, it wasn't easy to host with them. And, you know, but I told him straight up, I mean, with me and him, we never had an issue. We didn't have an issue because I, I just told him the way I felt. But he knew I was in his corner, too. And, I, and, and, and you know what? I still thought it was a mistake when they got rid of him, but they, they, they didn't want to take another chance on him rebuilding that team, and they had a different philosophy, and it was time to move on. Yep. Now, my, my favorite story about Mike is I was working at WBBM-TV uh, Chicago, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. Mike liked to have a couple of drinks, you know, after the game and so forth, and uh, he sometimes would show up at the studio uh, a, little, <laughs> a little tipsy, let's put it that way. Hey, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I was hoping to, I was praying to God he'd pick up the phone today, and he's 80. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, that's just the way it is when you, when you have – uh, up, up, when you book the high celebrity guests, whether it's on radio, whether you're promoting on Twitter or television, you, you're, you're having a heart attack, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, here's another one for you. After the game... So when he showed up, he showed up, right? Oh, oh he, he showed up and he felt and he felt good. But, always. I mean, there was times he showed up there hammered. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. Boy, oh boy, there was one time where Johnny Morris, the sports host of the show uh, and the anchor, sports anchor at WBBM-TV for many, many years... He would plot by fill him up with coffee, a gallon of coffee to get him ready to go on the air. It was always right. priceless. Now, another quick story. One time after the game, the uh, WBBM TV would do the live post game show, and they and Johnny after Mike's press conference would. Uh, Mike Ditka would join Johnny Morris and they would do a, a 15 minute interview for the WBBM post game show. And so I am in, uh, I'm at the studio downtown, so I'm getting the satellite uh, feed. And so I'm seeing everything that's happening before they go live on the air. So Mike sits down, he says, I don't believe I got to do this goddamn thing. I just finished talking to a bunch of reporters <laughs> over in that room. I thought, you, yeah. You he, and he, I. He had no pants on. Right. You you and I are going to do this tonight. Why do we got to do this now? And Johnny is like, Mike, you know, we have to talk about it. This is part of the contract and so forth. Johnny is so cool and calm. And Mike is just roaring. He is raging Mike. And so all of a sudden you hear five, four, three, two, one. And Johnny turns to the camera and says, hi, I'm here with Coach Mike Ditka. And Mike is like, nothing happened. It was <laughs> stupendous. You want to know something? Johnny Morris could handle himself too, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Johnny Morris could handle himself. So there was no, and plus they had been teammates, so Johnny was ne- I was never intimidated by Ditka. I know some people that were in the media. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll say over half. I wasn't, and I had him at his, I was with him at times like, wow. You know? I mean, there were times, I told you the story uh, yesterday when we were getting ready for the interview because people just, we don't just roll over and say, let's get Ditka. We had to make some plans. And sometimes, you know what, that's why things are able to get done. But one of the nights I got a DUI, which, thank God, I beat, was the night I was out with just him, out in Highland Park. Got a DUI. They were waiting for me. Oh my God. And he had a convertible, and he drove off. I drive the other way, boom, dink, dink, there goes the light. So, uh... I mean, I got a lot of history. I played golf with them uh, and you know, hung out with them. Diana. I mean, just some crazy times, man. Mike Mike was as wired as any guy I've ever met in his 50s or 60s. I'm telling you, I cannot wait for this movie because I know there's going to uh, be scenes in there with Ditka. By the way, John. Oh, he's going to be in it. Uh, John Buffone is in the chat room, and he says that if you know, if you need somebody to play Doug Buffone, he knows a guy, and I think he's referring to himself. <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, uh, you know what? We can't. Hey, you know what? I'm telling you right now, John Buffone's got all the characteristics anyway. Yeah, he We're does. Look at everybody. Yeah. I mean, the fun part about a movie is casting it. We have ideas about BB and myself, and we have ideas about Jigs. Dan Jiggets, who I just talked to the other day, uh, he'll be joining us down the line. Um, nice. And we have, you know, and then there's going to be just uh, character actors. I told everybody, Pat Tomasulo, who, 
you know, Cat's an acquaintance, a good guy, been on his show on WGN. I got him already, and, nice. and you know, everybody thinks this is, you know, anything I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. Yeah. So this is going to happen. Well, you yeah, know? you know. And I already told Pat, unless there's an upset, he's Tom Sheriff. I mean, that's it. That is he looks awesome. just like him. He's got the glasses. He's got the mannerisms, the, the white shirt, the tie. Yeah, that's uh, great. He knows how to. He's an actor. So I mean, you know what? There's going to be. You're going to be in it. I might. You know. I, you know. I told you that. <laughs> Certain people, and it's going to be a period piece. I mean, so we got to get older cars. Yes, exactly. We got to get the, the wardrobes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy, man. Yep. So, so you know what? Depending on the investors that we seem to have, uh, if anybody else is interested, they can email. But we seem to be doing pretty well on that front. I mean, uh, you know, hopefully it won't be a $4 million independent movie. I'd like to go bigger than that. But that depends on who you want and how you get it. I mean, if I want Justin Timberlake. Or if I want Jessica Alba, or if I want, uh, you know, somebody of that ilk, that's more money, man. That's big time. So you could go with certain people with, for less, but you got to depend. Depends on how they act, too. So it's going to be great. Uh, people are, are saying Aldo in the movie, and I think my, the perfect role for me is just one of the guys in the background who has been drinking a lot <laughs> in one of the, with the drinking scenes because I got a lot of experience. You might, you, might, you might play one of my buddies. There, there, we'll you, there you go. I mean, you know what? There's, there's ways to get listen. I, I, I have told people this. When I tell somebody something, this has been my motto the whole time. I tell them the truth. I tell them what I can do. I mean, I remember an interview not that long ago with a guy that was talking to me about uh, a station he had. He goes, what kind of role you think you'd fill here? I go, I'd be the best you got. Mm, nice. nice. And you know what? That's just the way I felt. So whether I get calls or not, I, I'm at a point in my career, too, where I got some license where I, I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. so, so bottom line is, I'm going to go and I'm going to have a heavy, not a thumb on this, but I'm going to be involved with Adam Rifkin and then Jeremy Morrison and all the people involved. And I'm very excited. It's good for the score. It's good for sports radio in general. It's going to be not a puff piece. Uh, it's going to be a realistic life of a guy that couldn't get out of his own way, was immature, uh, drank too much, partied too much, uh, stayed out too late, but also showed up to work every day, challenged guys. I mean, there's going to be a Jesse Jackson character in this. Um, there's going to be a lot of different things that people don't know about that's going to be a revelation. And I will tell you this, because I know enough about your life story. To you know, know enough about it. You do. To know that B.B. North will be the star of this movie. The character that no is... No doubt about it. Oh, she is... Uh, that's an amazing, amazing story, and that's going to be a big part of this movie. You've told me that. Well, I think the beautiful <laughs> thing about B is she knew the animal that she w met. She knew the situation. She knew softball. She knew about everything that I wanted to do. She never really, she, she guided me. She's going to be the star. I, 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 if you saw the Green Book, okay, the woman, the wife that's married to Tony, mm -hmm. okay, wonderful person, uh, but Bebe will be, in my opinion, she, the hero of this movie. That's, that's just my opinion. Yeah. And, and, and the respect for her will be, which is, I think, throughout everybody. Everybody that's ever dealt with Bebe knows what, she had to put up with, knows the respect that she has from everybody, and knows how she helped guide me, period. I know Adam Rifkin's work as a director and producer, <laughs> and I, I know that he's going to do this right, and that B.B. North is going to be the star of this movie. Oh, well, you know what? That's the way the, the script is anyway. Yeah, it has to I be. I mean, because <laughs> that's the way the script is. You can't, you can't make somebody something they aren't. Mm -hmm. B.B. is genuine, Okay. When everybody else around her, including her husband, wasn't always genuine. Mm. That's just the way it is. That's life. You know, where you forget about your, you know, you forget that, you know, you got to be somewhere for, for a, a, a baptism and you blow it off. Yeah. Because you're playing ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> and how she handled things and how she guided things. It's, it's going to be a wonderful movie. And I think I'm going to be, look, I don't do anything half-assed. I never have. 
And you know that, Aldo, we become friends. And when I say something, I mean, there's going to be a lot of people that will be recognizable. I just can't wait. To, I don't know who the hell is going to play Boris. Mm. I, don't, I, you know, I don't know who's going to play Danny. Danny Mac. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be tons of fun. All right, we've got a few other topics to talk about, so sure. let's try to get those in. Before I, I, I turn our attention, let's save the NFL draft uh, for the last part of the show because i got two or three questions uh, for you about that. But right. I want to talk about the last dance, the Chicago Bulls, because you were there. You had lots of interaction with Michael Jordan, the Chicago Bulls. Tell me what you thought about the first two episodes that aired Sunday, The Last Dance, about the Chicago Bulls' final season, and also provided lots of history about the team and how it was built. Well, we knew the history. And before this happened, and we'll talk about some other topics today where I knew things were going to happen before they did. Cool. I told Eldo, right here on Bears Barroom, I said, we're not going to learn anything new anybody from Chicago from this documentary. Now, I did learn a couple new things, but they were small things. Most of the stuff that we knew, Jordan at North Carolina, you know, Scottie Pippen, you know, I did not know. I knew Scotty was a tool, but I didn't know how much of a piece of crap he really was until I heard the story of other basketball players on that team, pros, even though they weren't as talented, talking about the stuff that Pippen would yell in the back because he signed a bad deal that people warned him not to do. So I, I knew he was a piece of crap, but I didn't know he was that big a piece of crap where he fat shamed the guy, where they fuck, uh, they made fun of the guy, uh, you know, and stuff like that. I think Krause's ego did get in the way, uh, but I also like the fact that Reinsdorf backed him up by saying there'd be no Phil Jackson without Kraus. But basically, although like I told you, you know, you're hearing from Rick Kellender again. You're hearing from Jason, you know, uh, t- t- from Mike Wilbon again. You're hearing from the same cast of characters, Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr said nobody resented Pippen for coming back late and having surgery late. He's, he's full of it. He's full of it. Because even Michael Jordan just said that he was selfish for that. That's right. So, I mean, I want Steve Kerr to get back on board and quit pretending, you know, to play, to, 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 to quit trying to look so good because everybody in Chicago thought Pippen was wrong for, for delaying the surgery, but he wanted to get back at the Bulls and he stuck it to his own teammates. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And that's the way I felt about him. Now, did they break up the team? Yeah. Was it stupid? Yeah. It was. It was stupid. They should have run it out, but Krause's ego got in the way, too. So there's a lot of different things that go into play here. And, you know, I thought, by the way, BB just saw it last night. We played it. Yeah. And it, she's so mad still <laughs> about the way they broke up the team. Yeah. So I know what side she's on. Well, and she I know, was on Jordan, though, I, I know period. You've, I know you've got a list of some franchises that were broken up. But before we get there, I want to ask you this question about the Scottie Pippen situation. Because I know you. I know that you are one of the most generous people on the face of the earth. I mean, we could talk about stories of things that you've done for other people that are just amazing. So I'm sure you can understand the frustration that Scotty went through when he was playing under that contract and feeling frustrated that the contract wasn't torn up after three championships, four championships, Mm -hmm. even five championships. It wasn't torn up and him giving him his just due. So do do you feel at all that Bulls management maybe played it a little too unfair with Scotty? They played it the right way, in my opinion, because he signed the deal. And the bottom line is he signed that deal, Elves, when his back was bad, when his knee was bothering him. There's no doubt what he did. But I have an old saying. Jordan was a champion. Pippen helped Jordan win championships. And in my world, there's a difference. Jordan showed up for the bell all the time. Pippen, when he was hurting, believe me, you're talking to a guy, I signed a large contract, the highest ever for a local sports radio host, ever. Ever. But I also got years. So I never complained because I wanted security. I got... I got a ton of years, and I wanted security. Scotty, at the time with the bad back, wanted security.
security. So that's why he signed a seven for 18. I get where you're coming from, though, Elds. It would have been nice for them to say, we're going to give you a bump. But that's not how Reinsdorf operates. And you know what? It's amazing how Jerry, once again, comes off almost unscathed in this. And he should <laughs> never, ever yes. come off unscathed. I mean, he looks good. He's got the suit on. Oh, my gosh, you know, I, yeah. I knew Jerry Krause was wrong about this. I knew Phil Jackson was wrong about that. I, brought, <laughs> I told Scott not to sign this. I told Horace not to do that. And who's the guy that was involved in all of it? <laughs> exactly. Jerry Reinsdorf. Jerry Reinsdorf. Exactly. It's a joke. It, it it's really like is. He's the PR man, not the owner. I am so glad that you're saying that because I have not heard many criticisms of Jerry well, Reinsdorf. I'm to criticize him in Chicago because lots of the, the media works for him. <laughs> exactly. He owns half of the sports the community you in Chicago. You know what I found out? Jerry Reinsdorf knows this about me. I never worried about my career. I never worried about anything. And Jerry Reinsdorf and I are friends. But Jerry Reinsdorf knows this. I'm still here when many people are gone that messed with him. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is, he knew he couldn't play me like that. He knows I'm always going to be honest, and he respects that about me. I don't care about status. I don't care about shows. I don't care about what radio stations I work at. I, I think that when you work for a guy like that, and I say that with due respect, mm -hmm. but I also know the power he has, Whatever else you do as far as opinions aren't to be believed. Because guess what? You work for him. And he's got media up the yin-yang in Chicago, period. I have to, uh, to ask you, what was the one thing about this uh, first two episodes that made you the most angry? Was it the Jerry Reinsdorf thing? Was it the Scotty thing? Or was there something else we haven't talked about? Well, I knew all of it. It just re it pissed me off. It, it, it basically, look, look, I think it should be, Tony Kuko said the other day, mm -hmm. this should be looked at as a positive. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's set up that way. I really don't. Um, I don't think it's set up to be where the Bulls are going to be in a positive position. I mean, they even showed the national anchors going, Scottie Pippen's the 122nd most underpaid. Well, he's the one that signed it. Mm -hmm. That's his fault. I mean, so, so, but he, at the time, here's what I do know, the seven year, you know what 18 million bucks was in 1991, Elbow? Come on. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Now, was it as much as he deserved? I don't know. But at the time when he signed it, with the bad back and other things, he was thrilled. What? Thrilled. <laughs> And how about his ex-wife put, putting up on social media that Scotty ended up doing well. In fact, he made more money in the NBA than Michael Jordan, some over $100 million Scotty made. So she, she, it was kind of an ex-wife move. Oh, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt. And, and you know what? That's fine. He said he was going to get his. He tried to sabotage the team, and Jordan wouldn't let it happen. Same yeah. with Rodman. Yeah. We're going to find out that these players – some of them, their character wasn't conducive to winning, but the man that had the highest amount of character was, and that was the greatest basketball player in the world, yeah. period. Yeah, very interesting, a absolutely. Because Scotty Pippen, you can ask Charles Barkley, he went to Houston, he went to Portland, it was a mess. Yep. The St. Rodman at San Antonio with Pop was a mess. Yep. So Jordan weathered the storm, that's why he's the greatest who ever did it, because he had to navigate all this crap that he had to put up with from people below him. I mean, come on. Yep. I mean, it was, it, it was just, it's just a phenomenal story. But like I said, B's mad at, look at, <laughs> B and Reinsdorf have had their discussions. Uh -huh. I remember Reinsdorf telling B that we were eating dinner together and Reinsdorf says to B something and B goes, let me ask you something. Oh, he was, he was talking about the Cubs. And she goes, yeah, but if the Cubs became available, you'd want to buy them. And he didn't say a word. He ah, ah, there you go. <laughs> Baby said that to him. I love it. I mean, I couldn't believe it. He had his mouth open. Because <laughs> he's such a big Cub fan. She goes, are you telling me if the Cubs were a fan? B, we're just having conversation. He didn't say nothing back. <laughs> I love it. All yeah. right. Tell me about some of these other franchises that were broken up. Because I really, I can't off the top of my head remember any. So, But you've done a little research, huh? Well, the 86 Bears. Oh, the 87, 88 Bears. Of course, of course, of course, yes. I mean, that's the number one right there. Mm hmm. 
I mean, the whole ball away. How about the Orlando Magic? Yeah. Shaq. Yeah. Kenny Hardaway. Mm-hmm. That was, they, they were on their way. Yeah. And then Penny got hurt, you know. A, a, a Shaq went somewhere else. How about the Milwaukee Bucks? Jabbar leaves. Goes to L.A. Now, it doesn't matter how, how they got broken up. Right. And, and here's another thing I love, Aldo. Here's another thing I love. Scotty, Scotty Pippen was the greatest Robin ever. Are people out of their minds? Are people losing their minds? Moses Malone and Dr. J? Wait a minute. Wait. Will Chamberlain and anybody? Jerry West? I mean, I, I, I have people. Shaq and Kobe? Which one's the number two guy there? Mm. I mean, Kevin McHale? Wait a minute. If you're telling me Scottie Pippen could play with Jordan or Kevin McHale or Shaq or, or Kobe, which I'm going the other way. I don't care what Scotty, how Scotty helped. I'm just saying, you know what? How about this? If, if, if when Jordan leaves and they got Shaq or Kobe or McHale, they win again. Yeah. I, they win again. Yeah, I, I, so I just get a kick out of all this. But you know what? There's no arguing what Scotty did as a Robin to help Michael to let Michael do the things. I'm not going to take anything away from Scotty defensively, but Scotty always had a resentment to be in the shadow that he a actually was with Michael Jordan because everybody's a shadow. Everybody's a shadow when it comes to Michael Jordan. Hey, let me add one uh, other uh, franchise, and, I, and you and I have talked about this before, that uh, really broke things up. A Chicago team was three and a half games uh, in second place, three and a half games behind the division leaders on July 31st, and they go ahead and trade Wilson Alvarez, Roberto Hernandez, two ace pitchers, and Danny Darwin, and basically give up on the season. It is forever known as the white flag trade by the Chicago yep. White Sox. That, to me, was horrendous. I remember calling the score, and I think it was Les Grobstein and just really <laughs> getting really upset and saying, I hate this trade. What is going on? <laughs> I, I agree with you, Alt. Mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you what. I remember me and Jigs taking more calls about that from my Red Sox fans. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, Reinsdorf was not beloved by Sox fans in the 80s or in the 90s when he tried to do a Euro TV guy, charge for TV. Right. He was not beloved. He lost a big part of his fan base. That, then he got rid of Harry. Mm -hmm. But you know what was interesting the other night? And this is going along with what you said here. Wasn't it interesting to hear Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause talk about rebuild in 1997? Really, I mean, when the first sound of rebuild I ever heard came out of a team that had a great, great legacy, the owner's mouth, that's the beginning of all the rebuild nonsense we've been hearing ever since. Yeah, that is right. That is right. Yep. Yep. All right, let's turn our attention to the NFL draft. Mike, I've got a little surprise for you because, you know, this show – was built on the premise that we were going to talk about sports gambling, right? We were going to talk about bets and so forth. Well, we yeah, but we could fill it up, man. Oh, you know, like of before course. Before gambling, before Twitter, there was a Gandhi in North. <laughs> that is I right. carry a sign. I carry a sign outside <laughs> CBS. Before Twitter, there was a Gandhi in North. <laughs> but. In, in recognition of the fact that we haven't talked about a sports bet in such a long time, I want to do it now, and I want to do it in style, Mike North Advantage style. <laughs> All right! Yeah! Hey, there you go. <laughs> Man, I haven't been aroused in months. <laughs> That's wild. Uh, all right, I've got two or three prop bets that I found over at oddshark.com, and I want you uh -huh. to give uh, your uh, betting advice. And I know I'm putting you on the spot because you don't know what any I of these are. I miss it so much. We, we built such a legacy together, and it helped me so much get uh, to 
you know, other things and to open up other doors. So, you know what? I do miss it. Yeah, I miss it too. And I, I, I've been honest about this from day one. I really don't know a heck of a lot about gambling. It is, it is very, very intriguing, but I've never really gambled much. But nonetheless, I have learned so much about sports gambling from you, and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank and you, buddy. It's been very entertaining to talk uh, sports gambling with you. Now, I've got one. Jalen Hurts is the quarterback who played at Oklahoma and prior to that was at Alabama. I'm in love with this guy as a potential quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Odd Shark says, when will Jalen Hurts be drafted? A lot of people say it's going to be in round two and the odds are minus 125. Round three is plus 170. Rounds four through seven are plus 600. And if he's drafted in round one, it is plus plus 750. So I'm asking you, what round will Jalen Hurts be drafted in? And then we'll talk about it next week. Man, I'd love to see him drafted in the second round. And if the Bears took him, I'd have no problem with it. Um, But you know what? Uh, I don't know if that's the way they're going to go. I was, out of all the people that I watched in college football, as impressed with his, I guess, his not giving up. Yeah. His playing hard throughout the whole game even when he was having his brains beat in, uh, his escapability, his, his improvising. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a big Jalen Hurts fan. So I like him at minus 125 in the second round. I really do. And, and hopefully, you know, uh, I'll be right about him. I, whoever gets him, I think, is getting a football player. Uh, cut out, in my opinion, uh, out of the Joe Theismann type mold. A uh, guy that could do other things if you need him to, but you don't want him to. You want to see... Him soak it in. Seems like an intelligent kid. Good upbringing. Everything else. I'm a huge fan. Excellent. All right, I got a couple more for you. These I are, love it. Yeah. Well, uh, on Thursday's broadcast of round one of the NFL draft, will a camera catch any of the draftees drinking a beer? The plus is uh, yes. two fifty for a yes, and minus four hundred for no. What do you say? Boy, minus 400, and they're taking that. First thing I would do is I have a first round, if I'm a first round pick, I tell my buddy to go put some money down. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll be raising the beer. I tell all my friends. I mean, that, that's a setup. Yes, that's a setup. <laughs> that's what I do. First thing I do, I call Aldo Aldo, or I call my buddy Gooch, or I call my buddy Ace, I call my guys, I call. You know, Jigs, hey, Jigs, go put a dime down. I'm going to raise my beer up in front of the camera when I get drafted. You know, <laughs> my it. father, my uncles, my mother, you know. <laughs> well, that's what I didn't, I didn't get a chance to ask Ditka this because, quite frankly, around the 15th minute mark, I was, I mean, I almost forgot to go to you in the chat board because I was just hoping to God he wouldn't go off the air. Yeah, uh, I hear you. <laughs> but I had to, uh, basically, I, 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 I was going to ask him if he had any, I should have asked him if he had any money on the fridge scoring. Uh, a touchdown in the Super Bowl because yeah. the rumor was, I mean, oh. he was like 50 to 1 or 35 to 1. Oh. And the next thing you know, there's Rich. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That, that uh, fascinating question. We'll have to have him back just well, to, you know what? Just I, to ask that. I thought I was talking to somebody in, in 1933 <laughs> with a handheld phone. Yeah, I was on I my knees saying, was, please. Dick was, <laughs> was talking to me from a phone booth in Tallahassee. <laughs> All right, I got one more prop bet for you. The Chicago Bears' first pick in the draft will be an offensive player, minus 130, or a defensive player, minus 110. What are you saying, offense or defense? Minus 130. One minus th- 130. Offensive player, all righty. You need an offensive player. I don't want to play. We, we're going to draft uh, a court, uh, somebody that uh, at a position we, you know, we're going to draft whoever's available. Now, you know what? No, find somebody that you really like and that a position you really need, like the offensive line, and do that and, and, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you the prop bet that I would have done. Uh-huh. Is the Bay, and now I'm sorry I didn't do Tampa Bay uh, oh. with the futures because you know that's going to go up uh, with, with, with Gronkowski. And by the way, to sound like other people when it comes to the fake news era, and Aldo knows the fake news era has been around since the 40s, Oh yeah, since the 30s. This is nothing new. Fake news has been going on since the 60s, 70s, 80s. I, and only I, 
said that Rob Gronkowski would be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I mean, That's literally right. a month ago. Mike, I, when, right? when you said it, Mike, I was kind of like rolling my eyes. No way. The guy's never going to come back and so forth. And you were right. You were so right. I won't get credit for this. <laughs> like other people don't get credit for things, depending on who they know and who they blow. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, to anybody that's been listening to me, I, I tweeted Golic. I can't find my tweet, though. From, I mean, way back. I tweeted, I remember, whose property is he? Mm-hmm. I had asked Eldo, is he, ta- is he New England property? And Eldo at the time said, I don't know. I asked on Twitter, nobody knew I because remember. it was brand new. Yeah. I knew this was going to happen because Eldo announced, and so did Carmen DeFalco, about, you know, the Glock was dubbed wrestling. And I said on this show, because yes. I can remember. Yes, I remember. I go, yeah. well, he's wrestling. And Eldo goes, well, yeah, he's, you know, he's got a contract. And I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. So he's going to put on weight. He's going to start to get himself in shape, mm-hmm. in football shape. And let me just say this. Rob Gronkowski is just another guy without playing football. Yep. Uh, he ne- I never gave a damn he was on Fox. I mean, in a suit with a turtleneck. I didn't give a damn. What makes Gronk Gronk is playing football, and I think he's woken up to that fact because now he's big news again. Him being in the wrestling thing, fine. Big deal. Right. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. I didn't care about he was on the Fox on, uh, on New Year's Eve. I didn't turn it on. <laughs> Who right. cares? That's right. Isn't it about him being a football player and being tied to Brady? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. And this is uh, Drew Rosenhaus, his agent on ESPN, talking about Gronk. Yeah, I think, you know, as we took a full evaluation... Well, that's not him. <laughs> Let's try that again. That must be about, must be about my physical. I think that was my doctor. <laughs> I think this yes, is we, Can we play that one more time real quick? That one part just real quick? Hold on. Yeah, there it comes. How's my yeah, physical, think, Doc? Yeah, I think, you know, as we took a full evaluation... <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble now. When you hear full evaluation, you're finished. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We did a partial evaluation. We don't see anything. We did a full evaluation. I, I remember Gail Sayers telling me, Mike, I go, yeah, I can't make it next week. I go, why? I'm going to the Mayo Clinic for a physical. I go, they uncover everything. I go, that's the last place I want to go where they uncover everything. Exactly. If they find a little trickle of blood in your own urine, you're under the knife. Forget about it. That is so true. All right. My I mean... God, I, I go to see Dr. Surgeon Elgin. Forget about it. <laughs> I, think I, I think I got the right one. Here's Drew Rosenhaus talking about Gronk. This time off really reinvigorated him physically. He tells me he feels fantastic, the best he's ever felt. His weight's back up to 260. Um, he passed his physical with flying colors today. He's just really excited about playing football again. Uh, and being in Florida is exciting for him. Playing with Tom Brady obviously is huge. Yeah, I think that perhaps is the number one reason he's coming back. Don't I you don't think? know why everybody else didn't catch this. Yeah, you're right. This was so obvious. I've been through the Sandberg. Oh, Sandberg's never coming back. He came back. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, Jordan's never coming back. I go, you people are out of your mind. He came back. I've said this back then. When you're young, when you're under 35 years of age, I mean, Marshawn Lynch came back. Yeah. The guy has trouble getting on a bus, and he came back. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> the guy lives on a diet of Skittles, he came back. So to me, I always thought this was a, a, a no-brainer. The only guys in my lifetime that didn't come back uh, were Jim Brown, Barry Sanders, and, and Sandy Koufax, and Sanders was the guy that I thought might come back. He walked away. Mm-hmm. Jim Brown said, screw you, I make more money in the movies, and Colfax couldn't lift his arm above his head. So uh, That's right. That's uh, right. to me, this was an easy one. And Gronkowski, Aldo, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. He lost his aura when he quit football. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's a f- popular guy, but I-, I didn't give a damn, did you? No. But he did, if you... At a cruise or whatever, I didn't care. No, I, I, I'm totally, totally with you. He's a charismatic guy, but as a broadcaster, I would tune him in and I'm saying, yeah, you know, there's a lot better people. So uh, there's make, nothing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's one of these deals where he got away from the game. Okay, but here's what I do know. I told Aldo just what Rosenhaus said. 
He'll put on weight while he's wrestling. Mm -hmm. He'll miss the limelight. And now Tom Brady's on Tampa. Here, I, I said that Brady, if, if Gronkowski, I remember our whole conversation, was still on New England. Now, mm -hmm. if he had retired, Brady would still be on New England. Yeah. I think the two are tied together, period. That's a good point. Do you think that uh, perhaps Rob, I saw this on Twitter, I don't know if it was you or somebody else, you think Gronkowski probably retired because he was tired of playing for Bill Belichick and the Patriots and the Patriot way was kind of wearing thin, or you think it was just he needed a year sabbatical? I think I cannot believe he should do. He's, he's too solid a guy mm -hmm. to me to, to say I'm quitting because I don't like Bill Belichick. Everything he's got is because of New England and Tom Brady and, and, and Robert Kraft. They mm -hmm. all... I'm surprised. I'm sure they're upset in New England. Nobody's talking about this. But somebody said on Twitter, basically, New England got a fourth-round pick for a retired football player. <laughs> That's it, right. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, think about it that way. I mean, so... Yeah. so and I knew when O.J. Howard was let go mm -hmm. that, that this was... Oh, well, they must have somebody they're going to draft. Are you out of your mind? Do you people know who plays quarterback for Tampa Bay? And this really makes me really like Tampa Bay a lot. This is going to be a fun football season when they start probably in December. They're going to play a four-game schedule. Seven people will still have COVID, and they'll close everything down. <laughs> there you go. I love it. <laughs> Mike, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not saying. <laughs> Mike, I like it at home. See, I always told everybody, Jiggets knows this. I've told you this. Uh -huh. When they started this house arrest crap, mm -hmm. Well, we don't have a lot of room in our jails. This guy's a three-time drug offender. He's also <laughs> broken into uh, two houses. And he was also a bookmaker and hurt somebody that didn't pay. He'll be doing six months of house arrest. I could do house arrest. I always thought I could do house arrest standing on my head. And I was absolutely right. Besides not being able to golf, or besides not going out twice a week, I do everything I did before. House arrest with, I, I feel like Paulie and Goodfellas, who's cutting the garlic. I mean, my God, you know? Who's, oh, this is, I, BB threw me the bread the other day. I go, yeah, this is good. Who brought, oh, white wine. This is, I, I'm doing a scene out of Goodfellas. It's Goodfellas, it's Goodfellas at home. Right? I love it, I love it. You hey, are Charlie, absolutely right. Hey, Charlie, you're starting to put on a low weight. You better lay off the bread. I mean, my God. You're right. Am I right or wrong? Aldo, don't you feel like you're in the cell in Goodfellas where the guy's frying the steaks? The, in the pan. You're absolutely right. What a great shot of him with a, a razor blade cutting that uh, onion. Cutting just, the garlic. The garlic, you the know. garlic, yes. He says to me, what do you want for lunch? I go, I'll have a sub. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> I feel bad for the 20, 30, 40-year-olds because if they were calling off softball, for instance, 16-inch uh -huh. softball, if they were calling off any sports I played, I'd be sick to my stomach, man. There you go. I'd be sick. I feel bad for the young people. Yeah, I, I, I totally hear you. Strange How's times. Total? How's the dog? The, the dog needs a haircut really bad, and we're going to attempt to do it ourselves today, so he could be totally bald by the end of the I heard day. the other day Donna was mopping the floor, then she realized it was Doodle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Lucky just asked for a hike and pay. He goes, you people are around too much. And this is ridiculous. <laughs> Lucky looks like he's in good shape and happy. I saw him on the video with you. Oh, yeah. He came up running up going, Ditka, are you kidding me? I'm a fan. <laughs> I love it. Another uh, another award-winning show. Another spectacular show. I am going <laughs> to have... Uh, for those of you, uh, uh, there's still people joining us in the chat room. They're apologizing. Stay all day. Yeah. I'm in the mood of my life. Yeah. We had the coach. We talked about Gronkowski. Oh. Had a lot of pent up stuff. We talked a little COVID. Yeah. We talked with sports. We talked about breaking up dynasties. We talked about the last dance. I mean, how much can you put into an hour and 15 minutes? We go all night long like Lionel Richie. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love that song. Oh. I liked all night long, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. And the video for it was pretty cool, too. Oh, oh. the video. Whoa. He's walking All in the scene. <laughs> yeah. Mike, this has been a truly, truly an honor to share this moment with you. And thank you so much Dude. for what you do for the Bears Bar Room. And <laughs> Joe Theismann last week. Oh, Mike, I only care. <laughs> you know I care. I'm a team player. I love the Bears. Oh, I got one more thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I turn on. 
you know, I didn't know it's so easy because mm-hmm. we're going to put up the podcast. All you have to do is hit it. This is fine. Mm-hmm. You know, bear lick or whatever, the Mixler or whatever, Bears Bar Room. I tried to put it up. I got it wrong. But Aldo and everybody, all the guys, I appreciate everybody from all... But I tuned in yesterday uh-huh. with Bear Lissimo. Yeah. Okay? I tuned in for four minutes. Mm-hmm. And I have to hear Shane take a shot about Jordy Nelson at me. I have to hear that. Wait a minute. I have to hear, oh, he'll probably give him a seven-year contract. Don't think I don't listen, right? I go, wait a minute. All I'm going to say is, I'm going to go over this one more time for everybody. Did Jordy Nelson not, and did we not cover this ground, put up similar stats his final year to the fantastic, but first year coming off injury, Alan Robinson. He did. That is true. Uh, the problem but is... now Shane <laughs> has taken his father's, taken a gun to his father's point and said, why don't you give him a seven-year extension? My guy. All of you. That's all good. But I just wanted to say I enjoyed it. The Bears Bar Room. I enjoyed listening to it. I said, I can't wait to get Shane tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> and you did. I can't wait. <laughs> and you did. I'll play this for him tonight on 100 Proof. We're going to oh. be we're gonna be live. And I know I love everybody at Bears Bar Room. It's a great thing. And, you know, without Bears Bar Room, we, look, if you're a Bear fan, you heard it today. If yep. you're a football fan, you want to hear the BS, you want to hear the crap, go to Peter King or go to Pro Football Talk or go to that crap that worked for the NFL. You want to hear the real thing, follow Bears Bar Room, period. Or Aldo Gandia and Mike North. North to North or at Aldo Gandia or at Bears Bar Room or Tooch. Follow Tooch, follow Lil Nicky. Yeah, follow Shane, follow Johnny Buffone. Follow everybody. <laughs> follow Bear Lissimo. Follow them all, okay? I love it, I love it, I love it. What a great way to Shane end the show. I don't listen. Shane thinks I don't listen. <laughs> That's funny. He's, he's in the chat room right now. He says, my dad just grounded me. <laughs> <laughs> We're all grounded, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love you all. Love you too, Mike. Take care. <laughs>